Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how you can make custom gradients inside of Photoshop Elements. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to share. The more shares I get, the more videos I can do. Also, don't forget to subscribe. I do a lot of videos every single week, and about half of those are on Photoshop Elements. Okay, let's get to it. Making custom random gradients inside of Photoshop Elements is actually very easy to do. The hard part though is to find the right colors to use. Now there's a great tool over on Adobe and they have just recently updated that tool. So let me bring up that web page and I'll show you how this is done. Here's a web page. This is just a browser window right here and it's at color.adobe.com. It's recently been updated. Just a little bit of a new look but it still works the same as it used to. Now what you do with this is to choose colors. You start off with a main color. This is our middle color right down here. There's the main color right there. I can move that around and get whatever I want from my basic color. And then once I have my basic color, I can then make different color choices to go along with that color. And all of these should work out well with that color. They don't always work out well, but in most cases these will. On the left hand side, you have several different color harmony rules. This is analogous. They'll be very similar. As you can see, they're all kind of just lined up. Then we have monochromatic. They'll all be the same color, just versions of the same color. Triad, I happen to like the triad quite a bit. Simply grab your main color here. You can move that around. And as you move that around, everything else moves around as well. Now, some of these aren't very good. Like right here, these two colors are almost exactly the same. So that's not really a good choice. Just move it around to get good separation between your colors. Nothing really seems too far out, too unusual. And then you're okay. Like right here, I wouldn't use this. This is too bright compared to that. It's, it's kind of out of the range. But you can move it around and just find some nice colors. Now you can move these in and out. If they're in, they'll be lighter. If you move them out, they get richer. There it is, real rich, bright colors this way. So again, real easy to use this. Simply choose the color harmony rule that you want, and then you'll find your colors down here. Here's the complementary. They're basically across one another like that. Here is compound. Interesting little color options in here. Notice that this is working with three that are full saturation and two that are less full saturation. And we have shades. These are just mixing in black into your image. So you, those are your shades. You can also make custom ones as well, just doing anything you want with this. I kind of like either the triad or the analogous. Let's do an analogous down here. This time I'll do kind of a blue, a little bit lighter like that. Now with this, you can grab the outside here and spread them further apart like that. And we'll do something right in here. That's pretty good. So once you have found a set of colors that you want to use, on the right hand side, you'll see over here, here's the same color, it's just a smaller version of the same thing right down here. Now down below, we have the numbers down here. These are the hexadecimal numbers. You can ignore that stuff. Go over here instead where it says save, and you can then save these into your library. Now to save these, you will have to be logged into your Adobe account. If you have Photoshop Elements, you already have an Adobe account. Just log into that account, click on save. It's now been saved to my library. So up here, we have Create, Explore. You can look at different color themes made by other people in here. Trends, and then right here, My Themes. That's one that we want is My Themes. And down here is My Library. Click on that arrow right there. It opens up the library. And here's the one that we just saved right down here. Now here is the trick. You can download this color scheme into Photoshop Elements little button right there says download. Just click on that. And you can then download this. Now you have a few options to download. One I always choose is the ASE file. This is the Adobe Exchange file. Call it anything you want. I called my previous one here the Theme 1. I'm just going to call this one Theme 2. I'm leaving the rest of the name on there just for this demonstration. Normally I'll do something else like blues or purples or whatever. But there we go. Adobe Color My Color Theme 2 and choose Save. Let's go back to that save location. I'll click on the download button again. You can see there it is saved into my save location. Now this location up here, this is just a folder that I set up. I have a folder on my computer which I've named Photoshop Elements and I just use that to put stuff in here like font files, things like that. And I made a new folder in there for color themes and I'll just be downloading these into my new color themes folder. So this can be any folder that you want. 
doesn't have to be this one. You know, any place you want, just make a special folder that's easy for you to get back to in just a moment here. Okay, it's all been saved already. I'll click on cancel. So there we go. We've made a new color theme right down here. These all work well together. And we've saved it onto our computer as an ASE file. So now just get this out of the way. Now here's the tricky part or fun part, either way you want to look at this. Let's close that window down. To bring that up, go up to Window, come down to Color Swatches right there, and that brings up your Color Swatches panel. Inside here, click on your little icon right there, right below the Close X. Click on that, and in here you can Load Swatches right there. I'll click on that one, Load Swatches. Now, normally this will be going into your default swatch location for Photoshop Elements. I've already loaded in one set, so it's taking me to the last location I used. But this may be up here, this may be some strange location, kind of a default location for Photoshop Elements. So you'll have to change your location up here to wherever it is that you saved your color scheme at. Also, this is going to be showing you Swatches ACO files by default. Just change this down here to the Swatch Exchange, that's your ASE file. Once you do that, you can now see your files. That's one that I just made right here. I'll load that in and it brings those colors right here into my color swatches. So it's that easy to go from that Adobe Online Color Tool right back here to inside of your swatches inside of Photoshop Elements. Okay, now that we have our colors that work well together, let's go ahead and make a new gradient set. I'll be doing this from a brand new file. I'm just going to close this one down and I'll just delete that. I'll do a brand new file, File New, Blank File. Choose OK. Notice that the swatches still remain here. They'll still stay inside of your color swatches down below. There we go. Now, what I usually do is I will fill the background with my middle color. You can choose any one you want to. I'll just go for the middle color. I'll use that one right there. Notice as I roll over the color swatches, I get a little eyedropper. Click on the color with the eyedropper, and that changes your foreground color over on the left-hand side. Now, just grab the paint bucket, click inside, and that fills that with that foreground color. Now make a new layer up here. There we go. And then pick whatever you want as your second predominant color. Let's just say I want to have this light blue as my next predominant color. We need to now fill that in one way or the other in here. You can use any technique you want to to put that color onto this page in here, onto this file. What I like doing is just to grab a selection marquee and then I'll make kind of a big kind of a selection right down here. Switch this down to the Add Selection, and then I'll add in another selection over here. I'm making sure to catch my corners on these. And then I'll add in one more right in the middle like that, so it kind of overlaps those. You get this big kind of overlapping strange shape in here. Let's now fill that with the paint bucket, and then deselect. Now again, you can use any shape you want. You can even use a paintbrush if you want just to paint off shapes. Now once you have your first shape on here, we want to soften the edge down. And that's easy to do. Go up to Filter, come down to Blur and Gaussian Blur right there. And I found that a setting of 100 in here works out very well for the standard Photoshop Elements file size. Choose OK. There we go. Just kind of a squiggly shape in here. Let's now make another layer. I'll show you why you want these on separate layers in just a bit. Let's bring over here the purple color. Same idea. I'll grab the elliptical tool again, and I'll just make a couple of big ellipses. One up here on this side. Make sure you're on the add, and I'll put one down over here somewhere. And then we'll fill those. They'll both fill together. Select and deselect. Now you can repeat that Gaussian blur. It'll be the top option right up here. This just repeats your last filter choice, so I'll click on that. There we go. Let's put a couple more in here now. Make a new layer, and this time I'll grab this kind of a medium blue right there and back to that elliptical marquee tool. I'll put a circle over here. We'll fill this. There we go. And then deselect, filter, Gaussian blur. There it is. And then finally, the kind of a bright color right here. Kind of a bright magenta. Same idea, new layer. Grab our tool, just a couple of small little spots like that. And then let's fill this once again and then deselect and that Gaussian filter. And there we go, there's kind of a randomized coloration in here. Now you can use this to put inside of text, you can use it as background, whatever you want. 
If you find that something is too bright, like these dots are pretty bright in here, you can control that because they're on their own layer up here. Just adjust the opacity on that. So having these on their own separate layers allows you a lot of freedom and creativity just to come in and make some fine tuning on your gradient to get just the right look that you want. You also can, if you feel like it, come up here and use your different blend modes. I'm just going to use my wheel here and roll through the blend modes. You'll see I get different effects in here on these different blend modes. Okay, let's go back to normal again. So there's our basic gradient. Now to make this real easy to use, It'll be useful to have all of this stuff on one layer once you're all set with that. So use the special keyboard shortcut. It's the Control Shift Alt and then E key. Hit it twice by accident. Let's just get rid of that. And that merges all of those layers up onto one new layer. We can now hide all of this stuff. I'm leaving it here in case I want to go back and make adjustments or changes or put in different colors, whatever else I want to do. So let's have those just saved. And now I have this as one layer which I can use in other images. Let's say I wanted to put this inside of text. Easy to do. I'll just set my colors here back at their defaults. Grab the standard text tool. I have myself for just a real thick typeface so you can see the colors inside of the letters. And I'll click in here someplace. It doesn't really matter where. I'll just type in text. And let's grab this thing and put it right here. I'll make it a bit bigger just by grabbing our corners here and pull this out make it you know fairly large. That looks good. Choose OK. Now to put the coloration inside of your text instead of in behind like I have it here, just take your text layer, drag it underneath your gradient layer, go back to your gradient layer, right click on the name, and then select Create Clipping Mask. What that does is it puts this layer inside of that layer and there we go. There is our custom gradient inside of our text that easy to do. Make it easier to see. I'll just come right down here to just below my text layer. Let's put a new layer in right there. Let's fill that with white. There it is. And back to our text layer. Let's put an effect on our text layer. Go up to layer. Come down to layer style. Style settings. And I'll do a drop shadow. My angle over here at about 130 and bring our distance out and let's make our opacity darker. So there we go. And that's how you can create custom gradients that are much more random and interesting than the standard gradients that you can do normally inside of Photoshop Elements. Again, the real key on this is having a tool to find colors that work well together and that's what we have with it. Adobe told me to bring that back up again. There it is. It's at color.adobe.com and you'll first land on this page that says create and right here is where you can create these different matching color sets using any of these different harmony rules on the left hand side. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also make sure you click on share and share the video. The more shares I get, the more videos I can do. Don't forget to subscribe. That way you won't miss on any videos in the future. And also take a look at my complete training course for learning how to use Photoshop Elements and that's in the link right down there in the description. Okay, and I'll see you next time.